Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's earlier than usual. Uh, you can tell by looking in the background. And uh, today is Saturday, May the 2nd, 2020. And I am up in one of the bucket lifts that the grounds team and the property team has rented to trim the trees for the, for the season. Um, and let me just tell you what I am seeing and uh, actually what I'm also smelling up here from the bucket lift. And um, that is a newness of life. So I'm gonna try and uh, put a lot of devotion into a short period of time here. But what I want you to know is I can smell up here the burning that happens at Jonathan Dickinson Park, which is a controlled burn that gets rid of dangerous uh, dead ground cover and makes way for new life and new growth. And then also look look behind me, um, God's promises. I, I just can't even put into words. Um, God has again carried us uh, through the evening and we're here uh, in this new day uh, with so much promise and so much hope. Um, so let's begin our time in prayer and then we're going to visit uh, the book of Hebrews, uh, one verse that I've always really connected with and loved, uh, but there's a bigger story to it that we read. So please join me in a word of prayer. God, we today raise a hallelujah, quite literally, uh, and, and the promise that you have once again fulfilled in just getting us through the night and bringing us into this new day, into this newness, this day that holds so much promise and so much opportunity and, and the work that you're going to do in and through us and through, through this community at Holy Spirit Lutheran Church and through the world, through creation. Uh, and we give you thanks and praise for that. We, um, who are we to uh, be here in this place? We, we thank you. And uh, we ask that you be with us today during this time of study and through each step that we take today, that you would build our faithfulness, uh, that you would continue to help us to feel your presence. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Again, the book of Hebrews uh, reveals a lot to us. And I'm going to read from chapter 4 and go from there. So I've got to find a safe place to put my things. I'm, I think I might be 40 or 50 feet up here. I just wanted to get above the trees so you could see um, over the trees. So call me crazy. But uh, let's see. Let's go to Hebrews 4. And I'm going to read... Hebrews 4, and then we'll talk about it. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For indeed, the good news came to us just as it did to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as God said, As in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. Though his words were finished at the foundation of the world. For in one place it speaks about the seventh day as follows, And God rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again, in this place it says, They shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains open for some to enter it. And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he sets a certain day, today, saying through David much later in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest... God would not speak later about another day. So then, a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God. For those who enter God's rest also cease from their labors as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. 
And here's verse 12, which is the verse that uh, I have always found great comfort in. Uh, and, and it's a strange kind of comfort, but verse 12 from chapter 4 in Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom we must render an account. Word of God, word of life. So chapter four talks about the Sabbath, talks about God's promise of rest, God's promise of salvation. And the verse, the reading from chapter four starts with the word, therefore. Whenever you see therefore in the Bible, it's really important if you can, and I recommend you do, look ahead of the verse that you're reading. Therefore usually refers back to something that was spoken before the reading. And in this reading, we hear the story of how um, we are called, the people of Israel were called, and we are called to fear disbelief, to be in fear of disbelief. And the reason is because the people of Israel heard the truth of God, heard the promises of God, but still doubted. And they were in the wilderness for an extended period of time. God had them in the wilderness. So what we're hearing here is that we should fear. We should be in fear. But this isn't the fear of, uh, we're not to be called, we're not called to be living in constant fear. No, no, no. Uh, Jesus Christ and what Christ did for us, uh, remove that fear, the fear of sin, death, and the devil. We're to live in fear that we would disbelieve and we would uh, have the same situation that the people of Israel did. And it's, I'm trying to pack a lot into a short period of time. But what we need to remember is that our Christian faith, our Christian walk is a moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day exercise in belief. And we know this because we have these struggles, we hit these speed bumps, and um, we have this this sense of, of doubt that can creep into our faith, into our life, and uh, we're called to fear that. And fearing that means that we respond by staying active in God's Word, staying um, pursuing God's Word, reading God's Word, letting God's Word sink into our heart. That verse 12 that I love so much um, talks about how God's Word is this double-edged sword uh, that that just cuts deep. It goes deep and, and does amazing, great, and powerful things. So today, this morning, on this beautiful day, uh, I just want you to know that God's promises are real. We are living it right now. God's promise of a new day. We have made it through the night. Today is a new day, and it's our prayer that um, this day we give thanks and praise to God for all that God has done and that we hang on to God's promises every moment of our life uh, because they are real. Uh, we, we live in those promises each and every day. So uh, I don't want to go too soon, so we'll just take a moment to uh, look at the beauty. Look at that beautiful sun that has begun to rise over the horizon and think about how today we will strengthen our faith. It may be through prayer, um, it may be through sharing the gifts that God has given us, uh, it may be just a phone call, it may be saying I love you to someone. Um, ways that we can continue to build our faith, to build our, uh, our strength in belief that we would face this new day. Uh, God calls us not to harden our hearts, but to let them be open, let them be vulnerable to receive the truth that is God's word. And sometimes that truth isn't always easy, uh, but here we are. It's a new day. So what can we do today uh, to really live into our faith, to respond to God's glory, to God's um, faithfulness, uh, to God's faithfulness? Because again, a promise has been fulfilled. So I'm going to duck out of the screen only because I'm putting my book down here, my Bible. All right. Best book of all time. And I wanted to uh, close our time in prayer 
this morning, and we do have some prayer requests. Again, please uh, go to the comment section of the Facebook page, and you can uh, add your prayer request there. We'll be praying for you. We continue to pray for you because we love you. Uh, it's our prayer that you're well, you're safe, that your family, uh, everybody is, um, is doing well through this pandemic. And uh, we are moving forward. We're moving forward. This is a new day. Uh, and, and we pray for all of those who are working hard to, to find a way to beat this uh, pandemic. But it starts with prayer. So let's go to God in prayer and lift our prayer requests before God this morning. Because God hears our prayers. God knows our prayers. So let us pray. Almighty God creator, redeemer, sustainer. We thank you for showing up today uh, because we know that you meet us wherever we are and that you hear our prayers. So we come to you today with the prayers that are on our hearts, uh, with prayers of thanksgiving, with prayers for hope, prayers for healing. So Lord, this morning, we give you thanks and praise for the healing work that you have done through Val's niece, Val's niece continues to get stronger, uh, and, and we give you all the glory for that because you are the great physician, and these are things that are so far out of our control, so we call upon you. We call for you to, to be with your children, to heal them, to make them stronger, uh, and we thank you for showing us your presence through the healing of Val's niece, and we would ask you also to be with Val's brother, Rich, who uh, is having challenges in his health. And we would ask that you be uh, that same presence of healing, but also be a presence of hope for the family, that Rich would get better, become stronger. Uh, we pray that you would intervene in all of the treatments and the care, that you would be um, the touch of the doctor, the caregiver, uh, and the voice of hope that comes from those caregivers also, that that love that is given through care would come directly uh, from you. And Almighty God, we pray with Lydia K. Lord, we pray with Ethan. Uh, Ethan, who has just uh, suffered a concussion. Uh, so Lord, we would ask that you would be with Ethan. Um, out of the darkness, we cry, O oh God. Enable us to find in Christ the faith to trust you, trust your care, even in the midst of pain. Assure us that we do not walk alone through the valley of the shadow, but that your light is leading us into life through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray with Ben. We know Ben as Big Ben, uh, who uh, has a lot of questions about a condition, a lump on his throat. Lord, we would ask that you be a calm and peaceful presence for Ben's parents, Margie and Jeff, as they um, seek to understand what this is. And we would pray that uh, it would be something that doctors can uh, resolve. We pray that you be that presence of, uh, of hope and peace and healing in Ben's life also, and that we would never lose hope in you, that we would continually come to you in prayer, loving God, inspire by your Holy Spirit those who are afraid of losing hope. Uh, us now, for, uh, for whom we lift our prayers, all of those whom we lift our prayers, uh, give us a fresh vision of your love. Grant your powerful deliverance through the one who makes all things new. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, my friends, it has been a joy to be here with you. Uh, I am um, so thankful to be able to serve this community and um, to be able to pray for you, to pray with you. And uh, it's my prayer that you have a day that you feel and see God at work in the world. So until I see you again, peace be with you. Amen.